back to playback. All right, so let's take a look at what you say on Twitter. Very active, by the way. Uh, Michael Odok says Kisumu is less than 40 kilometers away. Chipelo should consider moving their home games there. Uh, Dura Vandi Simi, Sami, who's probably a Tusker player, says uh, we could have won on that ground. Oh my goodness, absolutely unfavorable. Uh, Baby Chic says Jesse Ware is going to have a great season. I know she is a huge Jesse Ware fan. Very huge Jesse Ware fan. Uh, James Makumu, please don't air those kind of matches live because it is a shame to Kenya and to Africa. The thoughts coming in thick and fast. Absolutely brilliant to hear from you. And then there's one here that I just want to touch on because it leads us into our next discussion from Nyakwar Mikwa. AFC should be thankful to God because Tika wasted 100 plus chances. Otherwise, the score could have been five goals to one. Speaking of Tika and the team that put AFC levels to the test, we have the coach in studio. Tim, welcome to Playback again. Always a pleasure having you. What did you make of this weekend and the Tika United performance? And the fight AFC left friends put up, if any at all. Yeah, it's, it's good progression from our side, really. Um, I think we created very similar chances to what we did the week before. Uh, the only difference is we're putting them away for fun the week before and we put four in the back of the net and uh, we didn't do it this week. So, slight disappointment there, the finishing. <laughs> Who can ignore Kevin O'Peel on the edge and that missed opportunity? I talked to you before that game and I asked you how much confidence do you have in him, how fit is he, how ready is he to play, and he seemed, you know, in fact I'll tell you the statement he told me, he's technically better than his brother. That's Dennis on edge, huge statement coach. It is, it's, uh, but I do believe... It's Sally doesn't mean. Yeah, I, I do believe, you know, Dennis's qualities are strength and his, his speed. Um, you know, Kevo is, is, is a very technical player. He didn't really show it in, in that game, but I think he's lacking a little bit of match fitness. It's been a while since he's, he's played 90 minutes. Um, so that's why he came on the sub. Uh, but you know, I have confidence in my players and they'll develop over time. Um, you know, let's not castrate him from, from one match. Let's give him a little bit of time to build into the season and build into the team. Uh, and, and you'll see better performances coming from him. All right, so FIFA United coming to that game against ASC Leopards in Mumias on the back of a 4-2 victory over Mohoroni, one in which Raymond scored a hat-trick. AFC Leopards, on their part, were coming into that one without, one, some of their players, including Jacob Kelly, and two, their head coach, Zafko Lagarusic. This is what transpired. Straight into the game now. The midfield on the left-hand side is being marshaled by Musa Mune, Martini Balabala, and Joseph Wayoni. Well, it's Brian Skidder being disastrous now. This is a through ball picked up by Ray Abodi again. And then just a ball control from Kennedy Ojeda is the one that is marking. The right foot in swinger that is not helped by the slippery condition. That's a better delivery coming in. Buwagi has a touch on him, but it's in the letter. It's a help as well as the scoring. And I'll see Ikena, Arushia, and Wolaka. And a return corner coming from Timona Wanyogi. It's the one that helps the situation here. And he's got a right to celebrate. Kevin on the edge, who doesn't fit 
right? After Chen Liu, you see Wu Mia, so you're thinking, now that's a better pitch. That aside, in Chen Liu, Jesse Ware it must have been the standout uh, performer by miles and miles. Fine. In Mumias, it was a tight race, wasn't it, guys? Jackson Macharia, Serebwa, and of course, Bataro, two players, different teams, brilliant performances. Well, I think Jackson Macharia was uh, the man behind uh, the kind of display that we saw Pika United uh, exhibit out there against the Sensor Leopards. And on the other end, of course, uh, Jordan Bataro, formerly with Chief of Pika United, was the standout player for FC Leopards. But again, this is a distinction between two management that one doesn't think about the youth development program because the uh, two players that played for Thika United who would have killed FC Leopards were actually drafted by FC Leopards in under 19, that is uh, Timothy Luda and uh, Eugene Mukangula. These boys came, came in in the second half and they completely destroyed FC Leopards. But again, you can't take it away from Thika United. I want to believe they play some beautiful football, but if there is any game that Thika United should have won against FC Leopards was the game on Sunday. Because FC Leopards came in, their mental state was not good, their players were unfit. I think uh, Chipo had a problem with the dressing room because some players came when the game had already started. A player like uh, do, uh, do the guy who came in, Gamma, sorry, he came in when the game had started. So clearly there's a problem and you should have won that game. Here's, 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 here's the problem that most people, most fans will have from Pika United with that statement from Gilbert Celebo. You're saying, making excuses, it sounds like you're making excuses for ASC Leopards when Pika United actually did deserve every accolade that they got. Uh, keep it simple. When you look at your game approach uh, with both teams, the tactical behavior of the teams, and especially with the coaches, Tika United had an upper hand. When they play 1 4 5 1 with the supporting striker, with the Masharia and Tidua in the, in the midfield, no, Alubutsi and uh, Tidua in the midfield, then Kennedy or Raymond, most of the time try to come and collect the ball. What about FC Lopards? They are playing 1 4 4 2. Mohamed and the Ikena, two strikers. Then we have uh, on the right, they had uh, Wafula. Wafula. On the left, they have Wanyonyi. Then in the midfield, it was Musa Mude. And of Juman. And Juman. So it's, it was all, all about 3v2 in the midfield. That's why most of the time, Thika United had that upper hand of enjoying the ball in the midfield, then spreading out, then coming in in the midfield again. Coach, I'm, I'm looking at Twitter here. Dennis Okeo says, pockets of wasted scoring opportunities by Thika United. Coach Tim Bryant has a lot to do and a big job, a tough job actually, teaching his players where the goal mouth is. They were wasteful, let's be absolutely honest. Uh, there's Michael Odonko says, poor fielding from Chipo. Gamma said I should have started. And we were lucky to escape with that point. And Abbas uh, also saying, he just played Ingwe, outplayed them, simple and plain, so much talent from the youngsters. That's a boss, Mohammed. A lot of accolades being given to Thika United. But we were slightly concerned, and this is where you come in, with some of the things that Thika United did. One of which happened to be the kind of, we, we're getting the possession football pitch, and you will talk us through the philosophy. But what about in the final third? The most dangerous place is defensively to try and pass yourself out. Thika did it a lot of times. AFC didn't capitalize. Yeah, it's true, but let's, uh, let's put it into context. So, if you compare last week when we scored four goals, uh, and this week, you know, the only difference was we, we're not putting the ball in the back of the net. So, if we went two or three weeks where we weren't scoring uh, a large number of goals and we're having that number of chances, then I'd be a little bit worried. Um, but I'm not at the moment because of, you know, I was pleased that we've had two or three games. Um, we've had uh, Shuru, we've had um, Marini, and now FC, where we're creating a lot of chances. Uh, the only difference between, obviously, you know, this week and, and last week was uh, was, was scoring. Um, but we've got goals inside us. Uh, I think it's a first televised game. Uh, you know, it's a young squad. They're, they're slightly nervous in, in these sort of uh, situations. Um, but with this experience, they're, they're growing and mature together. Um, and you'll start seeing more performances like we did against uh, Muni Youth um, because we, we, we're continuing to create those constant chances. What about at the back? Gilbert, we watched that game and we were very concerned with how Thika United tried to play themselves out of trouble, being caught out time and again by AFC. Well, I think there's one thing. Uh, Tim Bright is trying to uh, have players build from the back and uh, it is not that kind of a coach would allow these players. But one, one thing that is going to be very, very evident as he moves forward, when he comes across a team that knows how to press the ball, 
especially from the opponent's final time, then he's going to have problems. But I like what he's trying to do with his young players, trying to motivate them in order to be able to start the ball, build his moves from the back. But I think three times he was caught napping, and FC, FC levels are sharp. I think they would have been utilized those shots. It wasn't even three times, but we did have three times uh, that we captured, but it was a new number of times. What's the philosophy behind this coach? I mean, at the moment, we're, we're developing the team, so uh, we don't have a philosophy where every single time we try and play the ball out from the back. Um, you know, when there's pressure on, we do clear our lines and we do uh, play the ball forward and, and relieve the pressure and then try and press high up the pitch. Um, but I think with the players we've got, it's, it's about learning and understanding and developing when we can play the ball out from the back and, uh, and when we need to clear our lines. Um, but like I said, you know, it's, it's five games into the season, we've got lots of time to develop and, and learn from each game. Uh, and, that's, and that's the main thing. Uh, I think you'll, you'll see uh, a tidier team and, and the decision making on the ball will be a lot better uh, as the games go on. Um, but you know, let's let's give this this young group uh, a little bit more time to, to develop before we uh, uh, you know treat them like a team which is maybe played together for a few seasons. But this was the tough part, Salim. He's asking us to be patient with them, but in spite of that, you know, confidence gamble. We're not sure what it is at the back. It's something that he's slowly developing and trying to rein in their style of play. When you look at them going forward, that is the beautiful game that we pay to watch. Yeah, it's true, Chico. Uh, the most important thing is uh, maybe the coach is doing his homework. Look at uh, the kind of uh, players that they have in the midfield, and that is his strength. One thing, they have good run, like that one for Kennedy. The other thing, they utilize uh, the possibilities in the midfield. If they know the opponents, they, are, they have uh, three midfielders, they put them themselves four midfielders. So most of the time, they have that opportunity of uh, touching the ball as always Gilbert saying, tiki taka game. Small, small passing, small passing, then at the long run, they give a long pass. Well, Chico, I think they, the, the coach has done a brilliant job. I think he knows Dave, Dave can play in the central defense line. He's really been replaced by uh, Konis Obumu. He knows David King, a pivotal player in the middle. He has got in Mutindo, who's not, who has not been playing. He lost uh, Michael Olunga at the top. He has brought in Ray Omondi, a super player who scored three goals uh, against Moroni. So to me, uh, the youngsters who have come on board, like Eugene Mukangala and Timothy uh, Luda, uh, if given time and uh, good nurturing, I think this will be a good team. And I think you're trying to get uh, your own backbone. Probably in the next two, three years, have your own backbone so that you can now start facing out the old guys. Yes, it's, uh, it's a little bit like uh, you know, what Manchester United did uh, with the class of 92. Is, is, is finding you know five or six players uh, which I want to develop, which will be the, the backbone of FIFA, which will carry them through uh, in the next five years and uh, enable us to, to build on the experience, build on the development of those players, and, uh, and, and hopefully get them into the national squad and have the team challenging for the, the Premier League uh, and for, for the first time in FIFA's history uh, and, and beyond that. But it's, it's, it's being able to get that, that group of players first. Um, one of the first things we look at is attitude. Um, have they got the right attitude? Are they going to fight for the badge? Are they going to fight for the fans? And for me as well. Uh, and then from that, then we look at uh, their talent and their potential. I'm just looking at Twitter and what you're saying. Tim Bright, you are getting a lot of big ups coming through. Vincent Opio says, big up to Bright for believing in youthful players. Mutinda, Luda, Ray, Masharia, Mukangula. The list is endless. And he is very impressed and proud of you for looking at young talent and trying to build it up. Uh, and then there's one from Sebo at Tizomu says, Tika United plays such lovely football, but oh my, the finishing is terrible. What's the philosophy here? Tell us about your philosophy and what you're trying to ingrain into the Tika United culture. Yeah, I think, you know, the, the opinions of, of the public, uh, you know, if you, if you speak to the Tika fans, when they watched us against Marie, they saw a very, very different game. And I think because that game wasn't televised and they're seeing uh, missed chances, uh, I think that's where some of these opinions are, are coming from. But it's, it's a one-off game, and you'll see us creating more chances. Uh, but in terms of uh, the philosophy, you know, I call it a DNA. Um, it's a Thika DNA, it's, it's what we're made up of, it's, it's where we've come from, and where we want to be, what we want to achieve. Um, and it's, it's about you know, attacking intelligently. And it doesn't matter what team we, uh, we come up against, whether it's an AFC or a Gormai, and we pass the ball a little bit more, or even a Marini or a Western Steamer, you know we're going to play a long ball, uh, we run uh, football, it's, it's that we can adapt our style of play to whatever team we play against and stick to the principles of, of entertaining football, which uh, you know, I think is uh, for me a sleeping giant. 
I think it, it's, it's the main club of the of the town, uh, and it's a high population, and, and we want to you know try and play a style of football which will bring out the fans. You best believe I'm not letting that slide. Up next, just on team, are you say they don't exactly entertain while playing football. <laughs> Uh, you know, we played Western Stream, I played them last year with six stars and we did double the amount of passes. Um, they, they play long ball, it's not my personal style of, of football, it's, uh, I don't find it that entertaining. Um, but they play long ball, their physical side, um, so we adapt our style to be able to deal with that. We've already played Mooney Youth, who play a very similar style of lots of those long passes. Uh, and they've become 50-50, so as long as we're prepared for those, as long as we you know, win the first ball, or if not the second ball, uh, and, and attacking numbers uh, then